Hello everyone, this is Eric. It is February 13th, 2017, and I spent my whole day shoveling my driveway. <laughs> this is uh, 5 p.m., or almost 5 p.m. now, and I've spent literally the whole day shoveling this. And uh, broke my shovels. Broke both my shovels. I got this guy in the garbage, so I'm not too upset about that. You know, maybe I'll put a piece of Maybe I'll like rivet a piece of sheet metal on there or screw a piece of metal on there. But this guy I bought brand new and it's broken too at the bottom. And there's another big snowstorm coming tonight. Another 10 to 20 centimeters of snow. Uh, I would complain, but nobody would listen, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been a pretty easy summer though, or winter. My wife just came back from the bin and just got some usual suspects out of my uh, recycling bin. Old microwave, of course. There's no uh, glass plate in there, so I would suspect that maybe the plate broke and then they threw the whole thing out. This might still work. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll test that out, actually. And just like this sort of stuff, you know. Uh, I'll cut it off there and this part will be garbage and that will be insulated copper and blender that sort of stuff and I got a computer it's a Windows 7 and it looks like the power supply went dead or something they took it out it's down inside there uh, it's worth checking out just to see if it's still working because it's a it's a nicer newer one you know if I can get a new power supply I'll, I'll hook it in there hook the power supply on and test it out uh, just to see what it can do you know if it will power up again. Yeah, that's my Monday so far. I only sold one item for $40, and maybe I'll sell a couple more tonight. We'll see. It is February 14th, 2017. I'm just getting up now. I just finished my one package that I ship, have to ship today. I'm gonna go to the post office, drop it off, and I got my HVAC pickup again today that I have to do. And after that, I'm uh, also going to drop off some e-waste because I have a lot of that to do. I have that whole that big TV over there that I want to bring in. I want to get it out of the driveway because we're getting more snow. And then I got a bunch of other e-waste on the side there too that I want to get rid of. Got to keep it moving. And uh, yeah, so we're going to bring you along and see what I get today. Alrighty, all done loading up here. This is a pretty tiny load of e-waste that I'm going to bring in today. I thought I had more, but I only have two TVs. This is pretty rare. Usually it's like 80% TVs, but it's mostly just little small stuff like keyboards and uh, kind of other stuff like these drives. Uh, some other, you know, odds and ends, bits and pieces. They take it all. So I'll bring all this in and get uh, some money. Probably, yeah, I'm guessing around just over 30 bucks for this load. And there's some other like big chunky VCRs down there and some other audio equipment. So I'm all set up. I'm ready to hit the road. All right, here we go. Rolling up to the scrap yard. Bringing in my e-waste. See how much money I get today. Hopefully my window is not frozen. The days when my window is frozen shut, that's a bit of a pain. <laughs> Just go up on the scale, and we talk to the scale person, tell them what we have, and then we uh, get our little slip and we go around back and drop off our e-waste. Okay, so yeah, the a uh, little bit of a mistake, but I'm not going to bother, you know, I don't know if they've, uh, see they counted my e-waste as shreddable steel. Um, Sometimes that will happen on the scale like you have to tell them ahead of time that's e-waste or shred steel So I told them a little bit after the fact that she did it. Uh, I told her that it was e-waste not shred, but I got 30 bucks um, I don't think I'm gonna go back and say there was a mistake done uh, I Don't know if I'm getting more or less than what I should be getting because it's five cents a pound for the e-waste 110 per metric ton it's probably around the same, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Oh, for the fun of it, I'll see if there's, I'll do the calculation, see if I'm making more or less. 
Okay, I'm just at my scrap uh, scrapyard HVAC pickup. Uh, it's only two minutes away from my scrapyard. I wanted to say something though, but I didn't want to drive or, and uh, talk on the drive and talk on the camera. Uh, it was just kind of awkward there because I used to go to that scrapyard all the time, and I would bring them all of my copper and and brass and everything. Um, and so you know when you when you've spent like two or three years building up a relationship um, with like the manager there to all of a sudden just stop I mean it's pretty obvious that I found somewhere else to go so it was just a bit awkward you know he's there and I'm like hi and it's like I'm only dropping off my crappy e-waste with you guys now <laughs> uh, so yeah but you know it's, it's business is business right like you can't uh, you build relationships you build nice rapport with people and you get chummy but uh, at the end of the day when you find a better deal I mean, you got to go with them because the other scrapyard that I'm going to now, it's closer to me. They give me better prices. They're much more flexible on their prices. You know, they give me better bonuses. Um, so it's really a no brainer for me. And it's unfortunate. So I'm going to show you guys what I got here at the, my pickup and it's quite a bit of stuff. I hope, I hope I can fit it all in one truckload. Let's go take a look. That's yummy. This, this is a good one. I got all these bins though, I gotta put those in the front seat. I got truck all filled up. And she is full. <sighs> Damn, man. A lot of loose tin on that load. So I have no choice. I have to go to the back to the scrapyard. The one that's close by here. And so I get that. Uh, their prices are 110 a ton, um, which is fine. It's good because I'm getting 130 at my at my regular yard that I go to. Uh, but yeah, I have no choice. I I can't be going down the roads all the way back home with a load like that. Pieces are going to fly off and cause an accident. So the yard here is nice and close. I like I literally I can do 20 kilometers an hour the whole way there if I if I want to. Um, so I don't have to worry about anything flying off. Um, yeah, it's a nice big load, that's for sure. I got a nice uh, couple big pieces of copper that I'm going to go look at. The Back uh, when I first started doing this uh, HVAC pickup, what I would do is, and, and bef before the other the yard that uh, is closer to my house, before I knew that existed or before it opened, what I would do is I would bring all my tools with me here in the truck. And what I would do is clean off all the stuff at this yard. So I would be cleaning all the metal, uh, stripping all the furnaces of parts, and, uh, and doing it that way. Uh, so yeah, yard most scrap yards have rules on cleaning your metal on site. Now this yard here, you just can't clean your metal at the scrap pile, but they have like places where you can pull off and uh, do uh, and clean off your metal like on their property. So you're still there. You're just not like right at the scrap pile. Um, so they they allow you to do it that way, which is really nice and convenient. So yeah, I would usually just bring my tools with me and just start uh, snipping wires and and uh, taking parts off of the furnaces, but. I like to bring all the stuff home and uh, take my time with it. So I haven't been to the shred pile here for a little while. This is place is much more busy. I won't be able to get any footage here. All right, that is that. I spent a long time talking to the guy out here that he uh, patrols the shred pile, make sure people don't drop off, you know, garbage like plastic. He was giving uh, 
one guy heck over there about uh, a dishwasher that was mostly plastic and a, a chair. <clears throat> Usually they'll let one or two of those things slide, but if you have too much plastic, they're gonna, they have to call the boss over and you don't want that to happen. Yeah, we were talking a lot about some of the crazy things he sees people bring into the shred pile. He says he bring, sees people bring like brand new air conditioner units like still in the box. Brand new stuff like motorcycles. I saw one guy brought in a motorcycle and it was this Yamaha motorcycle and he just wanted to throw it off the end of his truck into the... Uh, into the shred pile but they said no I'll get a forklift and they took off his truck he ended up getting $12 for this motorcycle he's just like man you could just get so much more for that sort of stuff like it's just funny so I'm just gonna get weighed up here one bucks and I still have the furnaces in the back of my truck too It's just all black here from everyone's hand. But yeah. <clears throat> what do you got? See here I still have all this stuff to bring home. I take all that apart. Copper. Alright, so I just gotta still have to go to the post office. And then home. Nothing at my bin today, but I gotta shovel this out. There was somebody that was on my channel wanted me to take a closer pic of my sign. So that they could uh, see what's on it. And that they could see, because they want to do something similar in their area. So I just have a logo there. That's just something I got off of... Uh, Fiverr, and here I just said, here are some thing ideas that of what we will collect, and I just listed down all the stuff. Then I have for questions or larger quantities, I put my email there. I don't suggest you put your phone number on a sign like this. But yeah, I even say things like, you know, I'll accept cars, motorcycles. <laughs> so I think I, that pretty much covers the, the whole gamut of things that you will. And there's the big sign that I have. It's like I got this off of uh, Vista Print. It wasn't that expensive. Like, I think it was under 20 bucks. Yeah back home and this is the stuff that I didn't throw out at the scrapyard so we just have this big furnace and there's a few parts that I want to take off of it see if how well it works I have a little bit of copper here uh, I got a couple of nice big pieces actually it's pretty nice and chunky brass these things are all aluminum it should all be aluminum. I'm These rivets should be aluminum too. You know, otherwise that stuff would rust outside. Uh, this contraption has a couple motors on it that I want to take off. Same with this thing. You know, motors, contact relays, stuff like that. Back there we got another furnace and the hot water tank. This thing here, it just has, uh, this is air cleaner. It has uh, some wiring and stuff in there. So yeah, the guy that was uh, at the scrapyard, he was just looking at me like I had three heads. He was like, why don't you throw the furnaces off too in the shred pile? I'm like, why don't you throw that hot wire tank off in the shred pile? I'm like, well, there's a couple things I want off of it. 
now and he just did not understand it <laughs> what i'm what uh as i mentioned to him that you know i sell some of these things on ebay he's like what get out of here you know like that sort of thing but he's definitely an old school kind of guy um yeah so i'm gonna go through all this stuff and take it all apart now it's uh hasn't started snowing yet but we're looking at a big snowstorm again and uh so yeah i got $30 from e-waste today and $20 from the other tin that I've already brought in. So it's already a good chunk of change that I made from scrap today, about 50 bucks. Plus I've made a, a few eBay sales as well. So it's looking good today. Okay, so it's a little later on in the day now and I just finished uh, scrapping out all the stuff from my truck. Uh, that's it there, took all the stuff apart. And so my wire bin is completely full again. What? Oh, sorry, I almost, I almost took a spill there. Uh, yeah, so that's all full. Number two insulated. And my brass bucket is getting pretty full again. That's good. And then my copper buckets are getting full again too. Number one, bare bright. Number two. It's looking pretty good. So I'm doing a, I've been taking apart some stuff to sell as parts and uh, I didn't get very much today, maybe a few uh, small pieces, but this guy, I'm really disappointed in myself with this guy. This is a, a, a motor from, from the squirrel cage. This is the, the furnace uh, fan blower, the circulating motor, whatever you, motor, whatever you want to call it. So it comes in a squirrel cage. That's just like a big fan wheel that sits on top of it. So sometimes it's pretty hard to get them off, get the uh, the squirrel the fan blade off, get the squirrel cage off. And so I bought a special tool on eBay. Where is it? This guy here. I bought this special tool that kind of you just sit it on there, and you tighten up these screws, and then you start turning this, and it pushes the the squirrel cage right off of it. Now uh, I should have. I should have sanded this off a little bit more and used a little bit more lubricant or something because why, what I ended up doing is I popped the shaft right over the back side here. I don't know if you can see that. So it's just popped the thing right out. And I'm just really disappointed because I looked up this model. It's a, it's a bit of a bigger motor. It's not like the usual ones that I get. Um, I looked up this model number on eBay and they're selling for about $200 these things. Oh, so I'm just like really upset. Well, <laughs> I'm not really upset, you know, I I didn't spend any money on this thing. It's just disappointing, you know. I should have uh lesson learned, you know. I'll know for next time. So yeah, it's totally it's just scrap now. It it doesn't turn at all. But I could have made $200 right there from that guy. Well, say la vie, you live and learn, right?